Welcome to Rockstar Doctor Life. I'm Alyssa Longo, and each episode, my guests and I will bring you fresh, fun ways to rock your life as a health professional and create a business that aligns with who you are and the life you want to live. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Rockstar Doctor Life. We're going to chat today with a female chiropractor who is rocking it in my hometown province, uh, another Canadian doctor, Dr. Michelle Campbell uh, is a mother of two, rocking it in practice and has lots of ideas to share about running a business, staying healthy and, uh, and probably lots more gems are going to come out of this conversation like they always do. So welcome to the show, Dr. Michelle. Thanks for having me. It's awesome to be here. Um, I'd love to start the show with just a quick synopsis. So who's Dr. Michelle? What can you tell us uh, about life these days and what you're up to? Well, I am a chiropractor in London, Ontario. I am married to my husband, Chris. We've been married for about five years. I have three and a half year old twins, Jackson and Alexandra, who are super, super busy. I, uh, I'm just you know, doing all the things, enjoying life, um, going through the challenges of a pandemic and all of that and how that involves and just taking challenges and making them into big wins. That's kind of where I'm, my goals right now and where I'm at. Yeah. It sounds pretty, uh, sounds pretty good, right? I mean, it sounds pretty consistent with, with the rest of us and just trying to adapt and, and keep growing our practices and align with our values. So tell us a little bit about your journey within chiropractic. Like how many years you've been in practice? Why did you want to be a chiropractor? Um, have you always had a private practice where you have an associate? What's your little chiropractic journey been so far? So I graduated from chiropractic college in 2008 from CMCC. And the reason I got into chiropractic college was I was a Dawn or residence advisor, depending on the school you're at when I was in university. And I went to a health talk. I didn't even necessarily want to go to this health talk. It was more of a, it was kind of, I, I should go. And I went and, you know, it was an hour of him talking about the body and its ability to heal and how um, I was really attracted to the idea that you could help with your hands and that the energy exchange of that um, and I just you know fell in love with that concept and so I became a patient and I had the experience of all the changes it could make in my own body so I was a competitive figure skater back in the day was very athletic with lots of different injuries and and problems and I thought oh this would be great because it'll help my low back get better which it did help but it helped so many more things so many of the global effects uh, that happened happened is what really um, created that passion inside of me to help others in that way. Things like, you know, energy is better, sleep is better, you know, mood was better, just everything got better because I wasn't dealing with this low grade aches and pains all the time. So I, uh, I went from there, went to chiropractic college in Toronto. I did locums for my first couple of years. So I traveled around Ontario, figuring out the style of practice that suited me, the location that I wanted to be in. Um, and I got a lot of great experience. And then I decided to move back to London is about half an hour from my hometown. It's where my parents were. My dad was going through a health crisis um, and I really wanted to be close to him. So I decided that this would be where I would start a practice and haven't looked back since. So now you've been in private practice for like 10 years? Uh, it'll, I'll be starting oh, my 11th? 13th year 13th. as a chiropractor, but my 10th, 10th or 11th year here in London practicing in private practice. Yeah. Awesome. And so how valuable was your experience doing locums? I mean, that's to me, sounds like a pretty dreamy way to really learn about how you want to show up as a chiropractor. Because let's face it, we go through school and you learn all the, you know, the things from clinic and you don't really have the real life experience about what, unless you surround yourself with a lot of, you know, mentors and you visit practices, it can be really hard to understand what practice life is going to be like. And I know from so many docs, I didn't get that experience. I did some locums, but docs who've had time to travel and, exp and explore um, have such a unique perspective on, on, on the profession as a whole, and even then about how they want to practice. Oh, absolutely. I think it was the most 
valuable thing I could have done starting out in practice. Uh, I went from practices that were more rehab based or MVA clinic style. I went from more higher volume practices. I went to, you know, Thompson docs or activator docs or diversified. I got to learn all these different styles um, and figure out what really I liked, what worked for me, what I was excelling in the type of area. Uh, so it really, really helped beyond belief. And it was great. I mean, I was single at the time. I wasn't attached anywhere. So I was free to go move to this city for a month and then mm -hmm. another one for another month. So I had that flexibility in my life at that stage of my life. And it was, it was great. I wouldn't have changed it for the world. I'm <laughs> learning what you love and what you hate is also perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I want to, so we're definitely going to talk about that because one of the reasons I wanted to chat with you on the show is because of some of the shifts you made uh, last year in, in how you're running your business. And I think that's a really great, you know, lesson for all of us, but for a lot of docs listening. So did you always have the vision of having your own practice? I always wanted to be my own boss or my own practice. Yeah, that was definitely a strong value. My um, parents were entrepreneurs and they were, my dad was a carpenter um, and a farmer. And so we were all, I was always used to the lifestyle of you reap what you sow. So I knew that that was where my heart was and where I wanted to go with things. Um, I didn't necessarily know I wanted to start it as soon as I did. It just... I feel like the universe unfolded in a way that that's where I, what I did and where I ended up. Um, but yeah, it was uh, definitely a, a, a strong positive. I love owning my own practice. I've started, when I started in London, I rented a room in a massage clinic and just started my own practice, super simple, um, built things up, got a hold of the business side of things, which was great. I did that for three years. Then I rented a larger space. I hired on a couple of massage therapists in that space. I was there for five years, grew out of that space to my current space now, which we um, bought the commercial building. I think it's about two and a half years, almost three years ago now. Um, and it's a large building. So we thought, um, when I say me, my husband and I thought it would be a great idea to have other practitioners because we have this nice big space. It'll be great to have physios and a naturopath and more massage and everything. And the theory behind it was great. Um, but I was finding the implementation, implementation of it I didn't love. I didn't love having to... Um, take care of everyone else's business. I, I just, when I don't have that, um, I don't know if control is the right word, but if you don't have that, you know, ability to, to, to do it yourself, <laughs> I don't know, mm -hmm. um, then it, it's harder. It's harder to, to work that way. And I was finding it was distracting more than anything. I wasn't doing the things I loved, which is adjusting and um, speaking to people and, and talking about chiropractic and, and doing the things that I loved. It, it seemed to, those became less of the focus and the focus was more on building other people's practices. And it just, it just wasn't where I wanted it to be. And then COVID happened, which I took COVID as a blessing in this way. I mean, there's, it's not a blessing in every way. Don't get me wrong. But for me in this one spot, it was a blessing because it created space for me to see how much I enjoyed being in the clinic by myself doing emergency care and seeing the changes that were there because there was no other practice um, members around. And I just, it really brought me back to my roots and brought me back to where my heart was that like, this is better for me. So um, fast forward, it ended up that we were able to cut ties with all the practitioners other than the associate chiropractor I have in the office. And it's been a great, great decision. No regret regrets. I've grown substantially in my own personal um, life, my own personal growth, but even business revenue wise. So it's, it was the right move at the right time for me. Mm. You embraced something, um, you know, that obviously had a little bit of uncertainty because there was, you had having the other professionals, there was an income attached to what they were providing your business. Um, you know, who knows about the implications of, you know, if there could have been any fallout with, you know, negative, um, you know, relationship type stuff within the business owners. Like there's a, certainly, I'm guessing, because I've heard this many times that there would have been a little bit of uncertainty or fear. Was there any of this for you? 
Oh, yes. I mean, I have done many different things in my life where there's fear and there's challenges. Um, I am not someone that tends to shy away from that. I usually kind of run at it. Like, you know, the, <laughs> the analogy of a, of a hill, you have a hill that you want to run, you can run hard at it, you can walk up it, or you can jog up it. I am the run hard, get it over with, and then smooth sailing after that. So um, I just have the personality that that's kind of who I am. It doesn't mean there's no fear. Absolutely. There's fear. Was there like moments where I thought, what the heck am I doing? Absolutely. But um, just trying to go back on listening to innate, listening within what feels right. Whenever I listen to that and I tune into that, I'm never let down. No. So you basically ran towards a hill. You're like, this is how I want to shift my practice. This isn't working for me. And I, I, I want to give you credit for that. I mean, how many times do we hear um, docs, you know, just going along with the flow or, or living lives that they think they should be living in their business, in their personal life, because it's what you're supposed to do to be successful. Have a big practice with lots of associates and then realize, you know what? I'm doing all these things, but I'm not really happy doing this. So taking a step back and say, what makes me happy? What's the core of who I am as a doc? How do I want to show up? And then shifting your life and simplifying things. It takes some courage and it takes some introspection. And you know, I want to commend you for doing that. And I, I want listeners to really take that to heart as well. Change is always possible. Absolutely. Yeah. And thank you for that. Yeah, you ran towards it, and um, and in doing so, I mean, even though, sure, um, having some ability to embrace change and fear, it can be innately driven, different personality types. But what would you say to docs who know there might be a change ahead for them? Maybe they want to make a shift in again. Maybe their associates. Maybe um, maybe their team. Maybe their business hours. Maybe do they want to relocate. Would you have any tips for people about how to navigate things that are scary? Yeah, one of the biggest lessons I've learned is to have clarity on it. So when I did this, I didn't just do it without knowing all my numbers, knowing what I would be losing in, in practitioners, knowing how much I would need to increase or where I would be at um, number wise. Like there's there was a lot of work to go through, like spreadsheets after spreadsheets. Um, and when you have that clarity, it's not as scary because I was like, well, if I don't have anyone else here, I'm fine. I can still meet all my bills. I can still do what I need to do and I'll just build from that. So I think just knowing where you want to go and taking that as your top and then working back in your steps. I think that makes the world of difference with anxiety and worry and fear is just planning it out. Mm -hmm. And then, and then being willing to, like you said earlier, you know, jump in and take a step back and think, how is this working? So, you know, did, did this, what, what can we change now? How can we course correct if the outcome isn't what you actually expected it to be? And realizing when you do have that thing that maybe didn't work as well as you wanted it to, you're the one that's going to be more concerned about it than anybody else. No one else really cares. So don't worry about what they're thinking. <laughs> yeah. They don't care that I don't have massage therapists. Like my patients don't care that that's not there. Um, I was worried about the perception of it more than they really had a had an issue with it so i think that has to do with making sure um you're doing what's right for you and just realizing whatever you do it's not that that's the final line you can adapt you can change you can pivot and we've shown that over and over in this past year that we are all capable of it and it's maybe not even as hard as we think it is mm -hmm. did you have other times in your life um you know as a chiropractor where you weren't following um what you felt was right for you like where maybe you have a nudge um, and, you know, your heart tells you to do something. You're like, no, I'm not going to do that. Or there was a risk that you wanted to take that you didn't, you didn't, and that you have any regrets around. Um, I feel like for you, based on what you're telling me, like you're pretty fearless when it comes to like, there's a challenge, I'm going to go meet it. But we all have times when um, we get caught up in things that don't really matter in our life. At least that's been my experience with, with interviewing so many docs on this show. And then it takes some moments of clarity, like you said, to get us rerouted in like, okay, what do I really want here? Was it when your kids were born, when you got married, like those two life changes would have certainly uh, have an impact on your professional life, I would gather. Yeah, and, and I think professional and personal life in the sense that um, maybe five to 10 years ago, I was more like I had a bigger social circle, but not as, uh, 
quality of a social circle. So I think thinking that, you know, if I want all these people to like me, I want them to all think highly of me. Like, I don't care about that as much anymore. It's not as big of a thing. I'd rather have five really close, great relationships than 20 casual friends. So I think that was a big thing when you have kids um, and, and life changes you just don't have the same amount of time. So the time that you spend, I think I'm more intentional with that time, whether it be professional or personal. Um, you know, I'm not going to, to just take five hours to do something that if I was more planned out and efficient, I could do it in one. I think that mm -hmm. would a, a, be a huge, huge change. And I'm more efficient now than when I didn't have kids and all these other responsibilities, <laughs> just because you, you have to be, you learn to adapt again. Yeah, I used to think that I could do more in an hour without my kids when my boys were younger than I could with three hours when they were with me, whether it was running errands or like, yeah. So let's talk about life with twins. I mean, you're, they're, they're under four, um, busy. How did your life and practice change when you became a mom? Did you shift your hours? Did you, um, you know, how you with fatigue, with managing your mom life and your doctor life? Well, I... Um... I'm very blessed to have a husband that is super, super supportive. He took parental leave. So I was able to continue adjusting. I started adjusting like two weeks after I adjusted for a day, three weeks, I adjusted two days, four weeks. You know, I just kept going up till about six to seven weeks. I was back um, in full time practice and it was physically challenging. Um, would I do it that way again? I don't know that I would, but it is what it is. And I learned a ton from it. So I'm not going to take that away. Um, I am very focused on the time that I have. So I now have two very long days in practice. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm in my practice for, you know, 10 to 11 hours, like they're very long days. And then I have Wednesdays completely off. And I have Monday mornings off and I have Friday afternoons off. So on Wednesdays, like we're, we're recording this on a Wednesday and my kids are still in their preschool. So at three o'clock, it's now then my time until they go to bed. Like we're with each other and I, we're going to go tobogganing and we try to do like fun things with them. But on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I don't see them very much. I get to see them for a little bit before they go to bed and a little bit before um, they go to their preschool. But I have all this other time. So I think it's again, going back to that focus and being efficient with your time, I would rather have those four hours where we can play and do something fun than have like a couple hours here and there where I'm not as focused and not as I'm distracted by this and that and the other thing. Mm -hmm. Did you ever struggle with um, sort of that internal conflict as a mom where you're in practice and you're wishing you're with your kids or you're with your kids and you're like, oh, I want to do so much more with my business because so many women uh, and dads too, um, you know, have struggled with that at times where that, you know, wanting to be two places and feeling guilt, feeling um, disappointment that you're missing out on things. Yeah, I think, I think it's normal to feel that way. And I definitely have felt that way. And I know I will still feel that way in the future. I think it's about what are your values? What makes you feel the best with mm -hmm. the situation you're at? So I have a strong value for my career. I have a strong value for, um, being financially secure. I have a strong value for spending quality time with my kids and for all of those values to work together. I kind of have to have a schedule to make mm -hmm. it work. Um, and I mean, I'm sure as they get older, that schedule might change and I might be doing things at different times um, to meet where their schedule is. But for right now, this schedule works for us. And mm -hmm. I'm again, no problem to adapt or pivot or change depending on if they want to play baseball and I want to coach it or they want to be at the arena or whatever it is that they choose that they want to do. Like we are so blessed to be chiropractors where we can change our schedule however fits our needs to an extent. Um, and so I plan on taking full advantage of that. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. I think it was, gosh, a couple of years ago with this podcast where we were having a conversation, myself and another mom about it saying like, you have the blueprint. You really can create the life and business that you want. And I said this to my clients all the time as well. Like you can change things at any given time, you know, like if your hours don't work, if your kids are evolving in their needs and you want to be present with them, like you said earlier, 
you know, we get caught up in thinking that our decisions are going to be an impact for everyone else. Our patients are going to care, but really they all adapt when the doctor's happy and on, you know, obviously you want to take into consideration convenience hours and, and all the stuff that goes into running a great business. However, for the most part, I think we get caught up in the barriers that really don't exist. You really can create and shift things um, that works for your family. And it is a massive blessing. I agree with you that we have as chiropractors to be able to do so. Yeah, absolutely. I think the the big thing is that you said there was when the doctor's happy, everything else kind of falls into place. I've yeah. proven time and time again, when I listen to my heart, when I'm doing what I love, when I'm happy, the practice grows, um, personal growth happens, relationships get better. It's when we're like in that stressed out, super tense state where it's just not flowing. <laughs> the universe yeah. isn't, isn't yeah. in our corner on those states. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I mean, we all have those times when, you know, people are canceling appointments or rescheduling or you're just, and, and you know, turns out maybe you're dealing with something and your extended family is struggling with, and you actually needed that time to attend to other matters in your life. So that energy is palpable, you know, in both directions. Um, so, and I love that you keep evolving, right? Like you've evolved with your business as you've gotten more clarity, as you said, on what works for you as a business owner, what doesn't evolving as your children get older and, uh, and go through their own, you know, step, stones of involvement in extracurricular things or whatever whatever life brings you as a family where what's next for you right now do you have any plans um, within your practice are you learning looking to expand your clinical skills or change anything up do you have anything that you're working on right now in your personal evolution well um Personally, I am trying to focus on my health a little bit more. Um, having the twins was a, a large health challenge. I had numerous things kind of happen after that that I've had to deal with. So um, right now, it's really a big focus getting back to training the way I was, getting strong again, um, feeling that kind of health vitality. Uh, and that's been a really great journey the last three or four months has been amazing for that. And so my goal is to just keep going on that um, train. And then professionally, we have added another chiropractor. So we now have three chiropractors. So over the next few months, um, having that team work well together, we're implementing a lot more team training and learning from each other. Um, we ha all have different experiences and strengths. So trying to just play off of that for everybody um, with all the focus being on chiropractic and the adjustment and and how we can help people from that perspective so yeah it's always always growth always exciting yeah what keeps you inspired in practice the people like the patients the things that they say like people are struggling so much right now and to be a bright spot in their day is amazing like I'm getting teary-eyed just thinking about it it's amazing to be able to offer people some relief, whether that be from a pain or a symptom or from just like the fact that they can get out of their house to go somewhere and mm -hmm. feel the touch of another human being. Like it's, it's amazing what we can do. Mm, yeah. Being, being the light for other people and being able to, I mean, I think it's the heart and soul of why many of us got into healthcare to begin with, right? It's because we have the heart to help other people. So it's certainly been something that inspires me as well. When it comes to, you know, we talked about being, um, being happy and, you know, that being the light, if you know, if you're practice and that naturally attracts people to you, but, you know, running a busy practice, do you have any other specific strategies for growth that have been really uh, key for you that you'd like to share with other docs? I think when you grow personally, you grow professionally. So I, over the last couple of years have done like you know I think having kids has kind of made me focus on that area even more um, because when you have kids you like I just feel like I just want to be the best I can be I want to be the best mom I can be for them and the best way I can show up for them is to show up for me so I've done um, Tony Robbins work I went to his UPW that was really great I've done some Rachel Hollis work and followed her, which has a lot of similar Tony Robbins things, but with more of a female perspective that I've really enjoyed um, working with different mentors and actually paying someone to really focus on some of your weaknesses and where to improve has been a crazy growth strategy for me. Um, yeah, I think just 
going to counseling, you know, talking to someone about some of the deep things that you have going on that you can improve. Uh, it doesn't mean it has to be like, it can be the smallest feeling of overwhelm that, that you just need to talk to someone about. It doesn't have to be a huge traumatic event even. Um, and ha having those conversations and having that support, um, just, it, it makes a world of difference. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, whether it's a coach, a mentor, a friend, a therapist, your partner, like having someone else outside of our being uh, see our lives and give us feedback, right, is is so powerful because we get caught up in our own stories and, and our own, um, you know, this, a lot of times the stories aren't accurate because of our feelings or because of our past experiences or just because we're just seeing things with our only with a certain lens and having someone outside your business outside your your life see you as a whole person and comment and give you feedback with a sort of that bird's eye view can be a game changer and in, in personally and professionally i couldn't agree more yeah it helps you get to your goals way faster than you could get there yourself is what i found mm -hmm. So I want to thank you for your time today. Um, before we wrap up here, do you have any lasting thoughts or ideas you'd love to share with docs listening uh, today as far as how they can, you know, grow themselves professionally, personally? Well, I think one of the biggest things that I learned was during the first COVID shutdown, um, when you can't do all the things that you're used to doing, is take stake in that. And what of those things that you're not able to do now, do you even not miss? Like, does it even matter? And if it doesn't matter and you don't miss it, then maybe think about reevaluating why you were doing it in the first place. And then think about those things that you really do miss, that you really are excited to get back to and figure out a way when our world goes back um, to being able to do those things that you can do more of them in your life. I think that's one thing that I really um, looked at. And because if you can figure out what you love to do and do more of it and things that you don't love to do and do less of it, you're going to have a happier life. <laughs> Yeah, you're speaking my language. I'm like, how do I follow the joy? What makes me happy? What does not make me happy? How can I do more of it? And otherwise, what can I delegate? Because life for me, I mean, I've learned that the hard way, I guess, like many people, it's too short to be focusing my energy on people, tasks, responsibilities that that really don't align with my best skills and how I want to help the world. So amen to that. 100% agree. Awesome. And I think that has been, um, you know, definitely one of the gifts in 2020. You know, I think a lot of docs have shared the same sentiment, sentiments with me as far as getting that, that perspective on what really matters now, you know? So we can't do this. We can't do that. Well, how much does your freedom matter to you? What are you willing to fight for? And how did your practice shift? And what can you, how can you bring some of those things moving forward rather than just focusing on, oh, these things got taken away from me? Because there was a tremendous amount of gifts and opportunities for a lot of people last year. And it sounds a little bit weird to say that because I, you know, I don't want to detract from the people, docs, um, any human that dealt with a lot of hardship and like, we're all seeing this in our practice, but there were a lot of wins as well. If we look at them, we dig a little bit deeper and do some introspection. So thank yeah. you for sharing that as well. All right. Well, listeners, if you want to connect with Dr. Michelle, be sure to check out her show notes, uh, her, how to find her. If you're in the area, I'm sure she'd love to meet you. And, and stay in touch. Um, as always, thank you for your time, Michelle. Thanks. It was fun. Great to chat with you. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Find out more about today's guests and everything else that we talked about in the show notes. You can also find all this content and so much more, including videos, blog posts, and how you can work with me on the Rockstar Doctor Life website. If you haven't yet reviewed the show, we'd love it if you headed on over to iTunes, subscribe, and leave us a review about what your thoughts are about future episodes for the show and what you like best. Feel free to connect with me on Instagram at Melissa Longo DC and of course on Facebook. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next time.